Hello, my name is Kim Simpson and I'm the Deputy Director at Jordan House and I'm here in the library today with some of our early editions of Mary Wollstonecraft's works to welcome another very special addition to our collection, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft's posthumous works, which would not have been possible without your generosity. So I'm going to show you some of these early works uh, and then I'm also going to get out the new posthumous works uh, and let you have a look at that too as we welcome it into our collection. So the first work I want to show you is this uh, Memoirs of the Author of A Vindication of the Rights of Women. And we've spoken quite a lot about this in some of the digital programming around this campaign. Uh, but here it is, here is the memoir that Godwin wrote uh, of his wife. And you can see that there's a beautiful frontispiece illustration of her there as well. And this is the tiny volume that did quite a lot of damage to Mary Wollstonecraft's posthumous reputation, at least at first. So Godwin starts, it has always appeared to me that to give to the public some account of the life of a person of eminent merit deceased is a duty incumbent on survivors. It seldom happens that such a person passes through life without being the subject of thoughtless calumny or malignant misrepresentation. He goes on, I cannot easily prevail on myself to doubt that the more fully we are presented with the picture and story of such persons as the subject of the following narrative, the more generally shall we feel in ourselves an attachment to their fate and a sympathy in their excellencies. There are not many individuals with whose character the public welfare and improvement are more intimately connected than the author of A Vindication of the Rights of Woman. This is one of Wollstonecraft's earlier children's books, uh, original stories from real life, and it was published in 1791. You can see from the title page that it bears her name, so the next item to show you is uh, a translation by Mary Wollstonecraft, uh, and this is Elements of Morality for the Use of Children, illustrated with engravings. She publishes this with Joseph Johnson, the radical publisher, with whom she enjoys uh, a relationship uh, throughout her life. So this is one of Wollstonecraft's earliest um, explicit political interventions, um, and it's her reply to Edmund Burke's reflections on the French Revolution, a vindication of the rights of man. And our copy is interesting because it's been bound with Richard Price's discourse on the love of our country. And so it very much puts Wollstonecraft in the conversation that she was having around the French Revolution at the time. Now, this, of course, is one of two first editions of A Vindication of the Rights of Woman uh, that we, we have in our collections. So the other is currently on display as part of our Trailblazers exhibition. Along with her letters written during a residence in Sweden, Norway and Denmark. And then this rather impressive looking volume uh, is Wollstonecraft's historical and moral view of the French Revolution and the effect it has produced in Europe. OK, so now for the very special bit, we get to open up our new volumes. And so here is our first new acquisition. Uh, and this is uh, Wollstonecraft's translation of the importance of religious opinions translated from the French of Mr. Necker. Now, Necker was the father of Germain de Stahl, who was a pan-European superstar. So we had an exhibition um, about Germain de Stahl and, and Jane Austen um, a few years ago, back in 2017, uh, which was curated by uh, Dr. Gillian Dow. The advertisement says, in rendering this work into English, some liberties have been taken by the translator, which seemed necessary to preserve the spirit of the original. So that we can add to our almost complete collection of early editions by Wollstonecraft. And this will sit alongside her translation of Elements of Morality, which I showed you a little earlier on. And we'll be doing a study day, um, having a look at some of Wollstonecraft's translations, but also some of the other translations that we have uh, in our collections, including the Charlotte Smith translation of Man on the School, which we acquired earlier on this year. And now for the very special opening of Posthumous Works. And I must say, I have been looking forward to this for a very long time. In the volume one of the board, you can see there are other nice findings. So here they are. Uh, you'll notice that they read Godwin's works. Uh, although they are actually Mary Wollstonecraft's posthumous works uh, compiled and published by Godwin 
uh, shortly after her death and published uh, alongside his memoirs as well, which I showed you a little bit earlier on. So you can see here posthumous works of Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin. The first two volumes uh, are made up of Wollstonecraft's unfinished novel, Maria or the Wrongs of Woman. Uh, and some of you have been uh, taking part in our audiobook production of that. Following volumes uh, include letters, letters on the present character of the French nation, uh, letters on the management of infants, letters to Mr. Johnson, the extract of the Cave of Fancy, which I spoke about as part of our Gothic Wollstonecraft uh, event with Laura Kirkley uh, last month, and then on poetry and our relish for the beauties of nature before hints. So now these posthumous works are here, uh, along with Wollstonecraft's translation of Necker, thanks to you. So thank you to everybody who took part in the audiobook, who came along to uh, our online events which contributed towards our purchase and who uh, donated either via our crowdfunder and our website or via the North American Friends of Chalk House. We are really, really grateful to have these works with us and in our collection.